Are you in this situation? You're trying to make a settings page. You want to have an audio slider to control how loud music and sound effects will be. You have an audio mixer in place, and now you want to hook all that together. Maybe you've had the slider directly correspond to the decibels on an audio mixer and realize that gets really quiet really quickly. In this video, we're going to show you the magic formula that you need to create such an audio slider that scales up and down the volume of each audio channel realistically. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you, yes, you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. If you're anything like me, you've already tried this approach of just making the slider go down on the audio mixer volume and it doesn't work right. Maybe that's how you ended up on this video. In this video, we're gonna look at three different ways to manage audio in Unity. One of them works very easily, but doesn't work very well practically because modifying the volume of each audio source according to some slider makes it so you can't practically have some sounds that are quieter and some sounds that are louder because all of them are hooked to that same slider. That's where the audio mixer comes into play. The second one we're gonna talk about is when we just linearly move the audio mixer volume down according to a slider. You may have already tried that and realized that one doesn't work so great. The third way we're gonna look at is the right way to do it because human perception of audio isn't linear, which is why that linear scaling doesn't work. It's more on a logarithmic scale. It's not exactly, but it's pretty close. So using this magic formula of log 10, passing in the value, and then multiplying by 20, makes it so it works correctly. We'll also look how you can save and load these values if you wanna have them persisted through different runs using the player preps. And at the end, of course, we're gonna have a demo showing how the different methods work. Before we go any further, I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. If you wanna join this esteemed lot, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, choose which support tier you're most comfortable with, and start getting some of the cool perks like getting your name up here on this section and getting a voice shout out starting at the awesome supporter level. Speaking of those awesome supporters, I have Raphael, Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, and Autumn K. I'm so grateful for your support. Thank you. If we take a look at the scene, we'll see that we have a canvas, a slider, a label, and some volume text. The label just says music volume, the volume text says one, and the slider is a slider with a min value of 0.0001 to one. Making sure that there's not a min value of zero is something that's very important here. If I click play, you can see that I can just drag the slider around and nothing happens, so it's not particularly useful. Let's jump straight into the code here, and at the end, we'll set up the scene with everything that we need. When we open up Visual Studio with the audio slider class, I'm going to create a public enum audio mix mode in here just for our demo. Generally for your audio slider, you're not gonna need this because you're only gonna use the logarithmic mixer volume case, but I wanna show you the differences between each of these. We'll have a linear audio source volume, a linear mixer volume, and a logarithmic mixer volume. Then as usual, we'll make our private serialized variables, an audio mixer called mixer, an audio source called audio source, a text mesh pro UGUI called value text and an audio mix mode called mix mode. The audio mixer is available under the unity engine.audio namespace. Now for our slider to do something, we need to make a public void on change slider that accepts a float value. It's important to make it accept a float parameter so that way whenever we are hooking this up to the slider, we can use this as an on change slider dynamic float option. If that doesn't make sense, once we get to hooking it up, it'll be a lot more clear. The first thing we're going to do in this function is say value text text passing a string template where we're just going to do value dot two string and four, which is going to show us the float value up to four decimal places. Then we're going to do a switch based on this mix mode with the case of the audio mix mode linear audio source volume. We're just going to set the audio source volume to equal the value. That's why we're saying it's linear because whatever value we have is going to be from almost zero to one and it's going to move linearly. The reason you wouldn't normally use this method using the audio source volume like this also doesn't allow you to very easily have different levels of volume for things. For example, maybe an explosion you would want to have set as one and footsteps maybe you have the volume as 0.25. If you're relying on setting the audio source volume based on the slider, you can't really do that very effectively. You'd have to basically make your own audio mixer. So why not just use the built-in audio mixer? The second case that we're gonna talk about is the audio mix mode linear mixer volume. Based on how the audio source volume works, you might think that this is a great idea. The audio mixer has a value from negative 80 to 20. So what we'll do is do mixer.setfloat volume. It's really important you call this volume and we're gonna get into why that is in a little bit. So just if you're following along, use this exact text. So what volume are we gonna set this volume to? We're gonna go negative 80 plus the value times 100. That way when value is one, 
will be at the plus 20, which would be the top of the audio mixer range. That is really loud though, so you may consider making it value times 80 to make it cap at zero decibels, which is generally what we want to do. The final mode is the audio mix mode dot logarithmic mixer volume. In there we're going to do basically the same thing as above with mixer dot set float, but this time we're going to use mathf dot log 10, passing in the value and then multiplying that by 20. That probably seems like a really weird formula to come up with, but we actually get this from Wikipedia. The problem is humans perceive audio more on a logarithmic scale, not exactly, but pretty close, not on a linear scale. That's why we're going to use this mathf.log, and I have this Wikipedia information about why do we need to use 20 times this value. If you want to read more about it, I'm going to have this Wikipedia link in the description. For most of you, probably just using this formula is going to be sufficient. One last note is probably you want to persist this value across runs of your game. You can do that with the player prefs class, doing something like this, using player prefs dot set float, and then choosing a reasonable key, maybe music volume, and passing in the value of the slider at this time. And then it's important to do player prefs dot save, otherwise it doesn't save. Then on start or something like that, you can retrieve that value with player prefs dot get float, passing in again that music volume string. You can assign the audio slider value, and then you can apply that value to your audio mixer. Let's open up the Unity editor again and start setting up the scene. On the slider, I'm going to attach this audio slider script, and on value change to the slider, I'm going to add a new event, drag the audio slider to the object reference, and select audio slider dot on change slider dynamic float. This is what I was talking about. It's very important that our on change slider function has that float value. So it will dynamically pass the value of the slider every time that it gets changed to this function and we will execute this function. Then we'll drag the volume text to the value text reference here. And well, we don't have an audio mixer or an audio source yet. So on the canvas, I'm going to add an audio source. From the audio folder, I'm going to drag the audio clip to use this sound clip that I made. We're going to make sure that this audio source loops because this is a relatively short clip and we want to make sure that it plays on awake. Now we're going to create our audio mixer with right click, create audio mixer. I'm going to call it just audio mixer. If we expand that, we'll see that there's an audio mixer group called master underneath there. If we click on that and then on the inspector, if we right click under the attenuation volume, we can say expose volume of mixer to scripts. The user experience of the Unity editor for audio mixers isn't phenomenal. It's kind of hard to find your way through some of these things. Like it's not very clear that we would be able to right click this volume. I've already opened up the audio mixer panel. If you don't have that, you can go to window audio audio mixer and that'll open up a panel. I've just docked this to the bottom and from here we can select the audio mixer and then at the right side of this panel we'll see exposed parameters one. It'll say my exposed parameter. We're going to rename that to be volume. It's really important that we use exactly the same text as we used on that script of volume with a capital B because this is a named parameter that we're going to set the float of at runtime. If they don't match our code won't work. As I was talking about earlier, you can see that this scale goes from negative 80 to 20. Now on the audio slider, I'll drag the audio mixer to our slider script and the canvas audio source to the audio source. The last step here is to drag the master audio mixer group to the audio source output. I just quickly rearranged my inspector layout. We'll start hearing the audio play. And since the default mode is linear audio source, Whenever we start dragging the slider, you'll hear it get quieter in the correct way. So that's good. The audio source, by default, will follow this logarithmic scale. If we fade it back in, great. Now I'm going to change it to the linear mixer volume and you'll notice immediately whenever I start dragging it's going to be really loud because we're going from 20 to negative 80. And as I drag this down you'll see that it does not fade out the same way. So using the linear volume mixer just mapping the value directly to the output volume level of the mixer is not a good solution. Let's try the logarithmic mixer volume now. Thank you. 
At one, we'll see that it's at zero, which is what we really wanted. At half, we have negative six decibels. At 0.25, we have minus 12 decibels. At minus 12 and a half about, we have minus 18 decibels. We're seeing that it follows the same format as that audio source was. That's perfect. I don't think there's much else to say here. It's pretty clear that the logarithmic audio mixer group one is the way to go. It's very unrealistic to have every single audio source in your game tied to a slider that controls how loud it is. Just because you have all of those different use cases of we want maybe footsteps to be more quiet, we want explosions to be loud, and having them tied to the slider doesn't make a lot of sense. I hope you now understand how we can make the audio mixer group control that based on a slider. One thing that you can also consider is maybe as soon as you launch your game, you have some music or sound effects playing and you have this slider that controls that and you don't want the game to start with it at full blast if they maybe set it down to like 25% of volume, right? I had something like that in my game. So what I did was on the splash screen scene, I set up a script that would load that key from the player prefs and then apply it to the audio mixer on that scene. And then whenever we got into the actual scene that has like the settings, whenever the player goes over there, the volume slider will just automatically apply the value from player prefs without overriding, again, the audio mixer level. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.